How can a liar justify? To justify is to make right. How can one who lies do that? And departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt. How would you like for the one that's to justify you when you, when you have sin on you, you know you can't take it away. How would you like for the man that has a stewardship of justification to be someone that's known for oppressing? For being oppressive. That's what man's known for. The old man, he's, a, he's an oppressor. Yeah. Who we were before we were changed. There's an oppressive quality about everybody who has not been changed yet. There's a, a manner of oppression. Maybe some smaller, some greater. But can you imagine coming to that kind of a person for justification? He goes on to say in that text, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. They're just deceivers. Deceivers. I mean, they can't distinguish between what's true and right. How in the world are they going to justify a person? How will they? Judgment is turned away back where justice standeth afar off, where truth falleth in the street, and equity cannot enter. They are unable to make an equal balance about anything. And thus hath truth fallen in the streets. How can someone who doesn't understand, as Romans 3 says, they understand not, how can someone who doesn't have a grasp on the truth justify? Brother, what we're doing is we're, we're kind of setting a black backdrop through which the qualities of God that make him a justifier shine so brightly. That's what we're doing here, okay? Imagine if man was the one that was doing the justifying. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil. Huh? Do we hold them up? Do unregenerate men hold up those who depart from evil? No, they're made of prey, aren't they? Uh, you just stand up for what's right among, an, among a, um, an evil generation and see what happens. Imagine if they were the kind of people that had the stewardship to justify or not. Well, we'd never get justified, would we? Job said this about man. Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints, yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water. That's what he is. He's full of sin. Sin has impacted every part of the human makeup. He's filthy. I mean, you can't contain filth. It spreads just like sin does. It's contaminating. And he drinks iniquity like water. If a man gets accustomed to iniquity, won't he be a little bit apathetic about your cleansing need? Hmm? Won't he be? I mean, say like he cleanses you from most sins, but a few remain, and then you stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Do you really want someone who drinks iniquity like water to be the one entrusted with the stewardship of getting you clean? Thank God, brethren, that it's not man. It is God that justifieth. See, it is God. It is the one who is righteous and holy, the one that hates iniquity. He is the one that is doing the justifying. And I can tell you, you wouldn't want it to be any other way. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 13 says this about God. Thou art of purer eyes than, than to behold evil and canst not look on iniquity. iniquity. How about that? Can't look on it, not without dealing with it. Aren't you glad he did look on your iniquity? I understand it was through the eyes of Calvary, but I'm thankful he did. He's not like man that can be apathetic to sinners. Today, men can sit there and watch people beating up another man who's just, you know, just like that man who was standing before the council of one of, the, one of these rulers, and he, he'd cared nothing for it. He just beat him up. No big deal. Didn't matter. Can't handle this kind of thing. But when God looks at sin, he has to deal with it, whether for weal or for, for woe or for good. He has to deal with it. Thank God, God is not indifferent toward iniquity when it comes to justification. He has dealt thoroughly with the matter, and we're thankful for that. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. There shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination. Now, this is God's perspective of iniquity. Iniquity is an abomination. We already talked about that this morning. Didn't we talk about the stench of sin? 
It's like rottenness. It really is like, like a dead thing. <laughs> if you've ever come up on a dead thing, you don't have to get close to it to know you're coming up on it, does it? Stench isn't something that you can contain. This isn't something that the devil tells you when he, when he draws you into iniquity. Yeah, that's right. That I'm sorry, you can't contain iniquity in the privacy of your own home. It has a way of working its way out, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It's like a stench. There are some other words that go along with this word abomination like detestable, disgusting. These are things that we don't even want to get close to. As Brother Gibbon was ministering this morning to us. Not even to get near, or Sister June, not even to get near the thing that has a defiling influence. And this is, brother, in a way of testing how close you really are to God. How close do you have to get near to sin before you're disgusted with it? See, this is God's view. It's an abomination to him. And that, brethren, guarantees that when he justifies you, he deals thoroughly with that detestable thing that's in you. Thoroughly expunging it, thoroughly washing it, thoroughly removing it, not letting any bit of it remain. It is God that justifies. Thank God that he's righteous. 1 John 1, 9, I love this. This underlines how important it is that God be righteous when he justifies. 1 John 1, 9. How about this wonderful word? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. Faithful and just to forgive our sins. That's the one we want forgiving our sins is someone that's faithful and just. Amen. <laughs> Why do we want him to be faithful and just when we're, well, if we should perhaps sin? Why do we want him to be? Because that's what makes the difference between going away clean or not because he looks to the death of his son. Man would be apathetic about the death of Christ, but God is not. And it's the death of Christ that makes God faithful and just so that God can look at our sin and deal with it and yet be merciful because righteousness and truth are met together in Christ Jesus. See, it's a, it's a marvelous thing that he's done. So thank God that the one that justifies is, in fact, God. It is God that justifies. Imagine if Satan had the responsibility of justification. I know this sounds really absurd, but just we've got to highlight who is the one that's justifying. Satan is known for cruelty and for destruction. In John chapter 8, Jesus had this to say about that serpent. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. That means all we've ever known about the devil is murderous treachery and evil deeds. He's been that from the beginning. And abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Right out of the chute, he's trying to kill the human race. What if he's given the responsibility of justification? What if he was? He is said to be, in Revelation, the accuser of the brethren. Hmm? What do you suppose Satan would have done? Remember Joshua when he stood before the angel of the Lord and he had filthy garments on? Do you remember that? What do you suppose Satan would have done? He'd rebuke Joshua more and heaped on more transgression on him. <laughs> before it was over... Satan would have made sure Joshua owned the sins of everyone. That's how it would have been. He's the accuser of the brother. Doesn't he try and get you to own sins that really aren't sins? Huh? Well, if he could smite you just for the urge, just for the fact that there's a principle of sin in you and make you feel guilty for that, he would. Huh? Remember what he did to Peter? We've got a classic example of the nature of Satan. Satan hath desired to sift you. As we, what was that? Maybe did it kill him physically? Was that, was that what Satan had in mind? Well, 